All right, how to um, get the most out of your Black Friday sale when it comes to your marketing. Usually we leave this really late and we leave it to like two days before Black Friday and we're like, ah, quick, let's get something out. And it's not effective because we haven't actually mapped the whole process out. So today I'm going to do that with you. Um, but first, we're just going to start with a few facts. Okay. So firstly, uh, I don't know if you know where Black Friday actually got its name from. I had to Google it because I wanted to know. <laughs> um, but basically, in the 1960s, the police officers in Philadelphia began using the phrase Black Friday to describe the chaos um, that resulted when the tourists used to come and shop um, and do their hop holiday shopping inside Philadelphia. Uh, so that's where Black Friday got its name. So what is Black Friday 2022? Um, well, I just shared some points. Uh, firstly, it's a huge sale where many retailers usually offer some of the biggest discounts and deals of the year. And in fact, I Googled that too, and it is the biggest, the biggest sale that you would have in a year, okay? Uh, many of the sales happen online, so literally buyers sit and wait and can shop from the comfort of, from the comfort of their own home, and they are actually saving in anticipation for Black Friday. So, uh, anybody here want to put up their hand and say that they're waiting for Black Black Friday and all, before they buy something? Okay, I always wait till Black Friday. Like if I've got something to buy, I wait till Black Friday and I wait to see if that price is going to drop. If it's going to be a fridge, if it's going to be whatever, uh, even body wash products and stuff, I wait till Black Friday for it. Um, so number two, Black Friday in 2022 is Friday the 25th of November. So if you haven't put in your calendar, it should be in your marketing calendar all ready to go so you can work backwards on your marketing campaign. Number three is Australians spent approximately $8 billion across the Black Friday four-day weekend in 2021 which includes the Cyber Monday sales. Fact number four, Black Friday spending statistics show the average household's bills spend was $430 in 2021. Okay, so think about how much you spend <laughs> in Black Friday. The average spend per household per person is $430. Obviously, that's mapped out. Some will be buying more, some will be buying less. Next fact, Cyber Monday typically earns more than Black Friday. Now, that's important to know that in your marketing strategy, okay? Cyber Monday typically earns more than Black Friday. Next fact, it is becoming trendy to run an early Black Friday sale to prevent being lost in people's email feeds and get people to spend money early, all right? I've already done it. Ghana just had a sale. They had their sale items, uh, their sale items at an extra 25% off. And I spent about $200 on Ghana stuff just because of that. And that was an early Black Friday sale. So if you have a look in your inbox, you'll see there's already quite a few there. Um, the average discount, okay, this is going to be mind blowing for some of you. Again, I Googled this because I really wanted to know what the stat was. Actually, in the chat box, put, put a few, um, if you have an idea, what without Googling it, what do you think the average discount is that people give on Black Friday? Uh, put it in the chat box. I'm curious to see because I, I was, um, yeah, oh, there we go. Some good guesses. 50%, 50%, 40%. 60%. Okay, so think about your business. Okay, and you, you've already guessed that. All right, I'll make you wait no longer. The average discount is around 37%. Okay, 37%, uh, which, and it is the biggest sale of the year. That's and Boxing Day. But, but Black Friday comes out as, as usually the biggest discount. The last one, of course, is 80% of sales require the average of five follow-ups, okay? 80% of sales require the average of five follow-ups. Now, why is that important? Because if you do not have a retargeting strategy in place, or if you do not have an abandoned cart strategy in place, or if you do not have somebody present to monitor the sale over that weekend. So Tara, no going away camping uh, or holidaying and drinking cocktails because you have to have somebody monitoring the questions 
uh, that people may be emailing and asking over that period and monitoring the clicks over that period and the retargeting because 80% of sales require five follow-ups. So you need to make sure that you are available. All right, so I wanted to include a little bit about imp impulse buying. And you know that I mentioned this in COVID, that, um, that during COVID, impulse buying was down because when people were online, they learned that they don't need to buy now. They can actually go into Google and find something cheaper. Now, I'm going to give you an example. I did this over the weekend. I want you to think about if this is something that you do yourself. Over the weekend, I saw a Facebook ad come up. It was for a laptop desk that basically you put your thighs around. So it kind of tucks under your legs. It's got an arm that sticks between your legs. So you can sit on the floor. Um, you can sit on the floor. You can sit in a car. It has an adjustable um, It has an adjustable laptop head as well. It can actually fold flat or it can fold at a 45 degree angle. And it was a Facebook ad and it was $99. Okay. I left that open. I, well, I saved the post. I left it open. I copied exactly what the product was. I went into eBay and I went to see how much it was. And I bought the exact product with the exact trademark name for $35. All right. I knew that that Facebook ad, they did a great job on that ad, but I knew I could copy it and go look in eBay and see if I could get it cheaper. And I got it a third of the price. So impulse buying is down, meaning that people are all going to go and price compare. They're going to go check you out and they're going to see whether or not it is a good offer. And if it's not a good offer, they're not going to do it. <laughs> Rachel, yeah. I hope you didn't shy them away, Rachel. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it is really important to note that. Now, impulse buying is down again. Why? Looming recession. We're in a looming recession. So people are really thinking hard about what they actually need to buy right now. So if we know that fact, what does it mean? It means we need to pay attention to how our customer is feeling right now. I had a client last week say to me that they have dropped. Um, it's taking a lot longer to fill their events than it has been. Usually people just book and pay. Now they're leaving it till the last minute. They're, there's always a space or two left. They're not filling them as quickly or as fast as they'd like to do because everybody is holding onto their purse strings because they're worried about this looming recession as we go into Christmas. And he said, I'm just going to leave it for a couple of months and I'm just going to ditch that, leave it for a couple of months and focus on something else. And I said to him, why don't you just pay attention to how they're feeling right now and address that in your content? And prove to them that right now, if you're going to spend money on anything, you should be spending on this. And he was like, oh, that, that makes sense. And I went, yeah, it does, doesn't it? So even though there is a looming recession, that's okay. We just need to be aware of that with our customer. And we've just got to compel them in a different way. And that's why that customer, not, you know, understanding your customer's buyer's persona is really important. And understanding what their needs are and effective communication on those needs is really important. So there are 20 ways that you can improve your Black Friday sales to start. I mean, you're going to get this list, but jot it down anyway. Um, it needs to be customer and outcome focused in your copy and in your offer. You need to prepare your audience. You need to nurture them and you need get to gain traction before. You don't suddenly on Black Friday wake up and go here. You need to warm them up beforehand and let them know. You have to use social proof. You need to create a sense of urgency and use fear of missing out. You have to handle objections and include the most frequently asked questions. You have to offer less choices. In fact, if you're going to offer choice, the maximum should be three. Um, and usually it's the center one that we make a bit more bigger and desirable because people go, well, I don't want the cheap one. I don't want the expensive one. I'll go with the middle one. Uh, that's an NLP type thing. You need to create a simple checkout process, all right? Absolute nightmare. I went to the caravan show this weekend, and with the caravan show, I went in there, and I had to scan my card and put it in. You couldn't just order fill anything in, and, it, like, I had to manually put everything in. I couldn't just click add and go, or I couldn't just Apple Pay, done, with two clicks on the side. 
like I had to fill everything out. I was like, oh my gosh. So I ended up doing it almost on the way to the train because I was like, I'll do that later. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. And guess what? They lose interest as later comes. So you have to have a simple checkout process. Um, you should have varying payment options. You need to have an abandoned cart or retargeting strategy in place because, listen to this stat, $4 trillion worth of products were abandoned in carts last year. $4 trillion abandoned in carts. You need to be able to take the payment as simply as possible um, and not overdo it with the landing page sales copy. Use your content to be the sales copy and to do the compelling and then use where they land to just take payment and seal the deal. So we're not selling to them twice because you can actually lose them. You need to have a good layout and imagery, which is not overly complicated. You need to have consistent content and messaging. So whatever your content plan is and your messaging is, you need to repeat it because I think I heard on last week, someone was saying it's not 11 times now, it's like 21 times. 21 times now. So if you keep changing your message and today go, ah, oh, this offer is for kids. Ah, oh, this offer is for parents. Ah, oh, this offer is for your granny. You're going to lose them. Whatever you do, it, you need to say the same and you need to go hard on that same message, that same buyer's persona, the same um, content plan. It needs to be your biggest and most desirable offer. So I want you to make a profit. I really want you to make a profit. Like that is important. And obviously it needs to be something that you've got capacity in. But it also does need to be massively discounted because 10% ain't going to cut it. Like. Um, you know, I saw Daryl and Rachel put it in there and said, you know, 10% off if you do it. The reality is with a looming recession, they'll go, I'll wait until I spot termites because, you know, it's only 10%. I'll rather just wait until I spot a termite before I get that done right now. Because 10% is not quite compelling enough. Um, I was talking to another client this morning. They they had, if it was an expo offer. If they bought it at the expo, they could save $7,000. And they were prepared to forfeit $7,000 just in case the money didn't sort of sort itself out in the next couple of weeks. And that was $7,000. So really important that it is the biggest, most desirable offer. You need to map your buyer's persona. So you've got to really know your buyer well so that you can effectively communicate and compel them to buy. We spoke about three packages and making the center one the most desirable. Red buttons get the most clicks, especially for men. Men love clicking on red. So red does seem to, to, to be a big red button. And a man likes that. So with Black Friday, it is black. People often use red. But remember that on social media, everybody's using black and red. So how are you going to put your color or your brand into that black and red in order to still stand out from all the other Black Friday um, promotions? You can use a pop-up for your coupons or your free shopping. So consider using a pop-up on your um, a pop-up on your on your landing page or on on your payment gateway, so that when people get there, it literally can pop up and say, "Don't forget to use this coupon code," so that it's just another little reminder. Or here's your coupon code. Don't forget to insert this. Or there's only three left. Jump in now. So consider using pop-ups at the cart. Check it's mobile friendly, all right? I went to book a, um, a, a GP session and the, they sent me to like a booking page or whatever and I was on my phone and it was so blunky on a mobile phone. I had to put it down, go onto my desktop and do it because it was just wasn't mobile friendly. So you will lose out on sales. So when I say test what you've done, test it on a desktop, but I need you to test it on a mobile as well. Your strategy needs to be end-to-end, -end, meaning that once you map out your campaign, it needs to consider the social media element, it needs to, to consider the, the where, where you land to take payment, and then the email marketing part of it as well. So an end-to-end -end strategy. When we're looking at emails, we're generally looking at a minimum of a minimum of three emails. So it's generally one that's going to tease the deal. One to say that it has started, and one to say that it is ending. 
but you still have to have your abandoned cart one as well. And you could have a retargeting one as well. Your offer needs to be, and your offer actually, and your communication needs to be solution focused. It needs to rub the salt in the wound. And it needs to be very much focused on that so that you can pose that you are the solution. And you do not need to say, I'm the solution and list all the deliverables. If you have done the rubbing the salt in the wound sufficiently, you just need to say, I am the solution, buy here, and they will buy. Because you could then start talking yourself out of it, especially if you start using your jargon and not their words, because it needs to be their words, not yours. Uh, you need to be available to monitor the sales or inquiries. So, you know, like Tyra said, when she went away, she had Kate monitoring her sales. You have to be there to do it. Today, I've sent out an email saying that there's a price rise from tomorrow. Today's the last day to lock in your program. If you have questions, I'm available this afternoon to have a chat or email me back. And I made myself available to be able to do that. To prevent unsubscribes during Black Friday, when you do the teaser at the beginning, you can say, I'm about to launch a Black Friday sale and you're going to get a whole lot of emails over the weekend. If you are not interested in a Black Friday promotion, unsubscribe for my Black Friday promotion here. And they can unsubscribe from the Black Friday promotion so they're not unsubscribing from your whole list. Okay? Um, and then you need to evaluate your results. So at the end of the promotion, you need to go what worked, what didn't work, what emails got the best open rates, what subject lines worked well, what got the biggest clicks, and evaluate what can I do better next time so that you don't just go and duplicate the uh, Black Friday automation next year, but you refine and optimize for next year. And guess what? You could use that sale again for end of financial year. You could use it for Boxing Day. You could just go and obviously change your graphics, change some of your words, um, and um, and make sure that it's still customer customer focused and relevant, customer focused and relevant. Okay, so this is the time where we work, where we go through the work. So this is what we're going to go through now live together for those of you who are VRPPs and attend live. Um, but I am going to uh, stop the recording first so that they don't have to sit there and work through it. This is the juice. You guys are getting the juice. They're getting the sum summary um, the summary online. Um, so I'm just going to go through what we're going to work through just so that they know online what we're working through um, and they can do it at the, by themselves, but then we will work through it at a slower pace. So firstly, we're going to go through the strategy and we're going to map out our customer and our offer and we're going to also do a competitor's analysis because if people are going to compare and see what else is out there, you need to make sure that you are that you're differentiating yourself that that you that people can compare you and see you as the best. Okay. Number two is you're then going to look at your website or your payment gateway. So you're going to look at where you are taking payment. You're going to look at the headlines, the sales copy, the images, social proof, payment options, uh, your links that they work that you have coupon codes in place, your abandoned carts in place. And if you want to use that pop-up, you can. Um, and we do have a make a sale template, which can help you with that. Number three is you're then going to look at your social media marketing strategy and you're going to create and schedule your content, which will start one, two weeks before and then carry on obviously up until that Cyber Monday. All right. And you're going to consider looking at video, GIFs, um, and you can use Canva templates. Number four is then looking at your email marketing strategy, um, which is number one, that pre-email, number two, the start email, number three, the compelling email, number four, the last chance email, number five, that abandoned cart email, um, making sure that you have got really good subject lines. And when you do subject lines, we're going to be looking at brackets, we're going to be looking at capital letters, we're going to be looking at emojis, okay? Because in your inbox, all the Black Friday sales, your subject line has to stand out so that they open it. And everyone else is going to be thinking about doing the same thing as you. Number six is SMS marketing. So if you've got platforms that do allow SMS marketing, 
Again, it's just sending out a pretext, a start text, a compel, compelling text, a last chance text, and abandoned cart text as well. And you can manually do this as well. So if you are a service-based business and you work with your clients, you literally could send them a message on Cyber Monday, again, making sure you've allocated time to say, hey, this is Chantel here. Um, uh, I noticed that um, you'd added something to cart and didn't finish it through. Uh, just wondering if you have any questions, happy to answer them because I don't want you to miss out on this deal. And you literally could actually send them a personalized message, either in text message or in Facebook Messenger as well if you have that relationship with your clients, all right? If you don't have that relationship with your clients, that's called spamming. Um, the next one would be uh, asking your referral partners to share on social media and in their emails. So for example, with Daryl and with Carrie Ann, they would have a conversation about a deal that they are doing. They do a collaboration. Daryl would add his promotion to Carrie Ann's database. Carrie Ann would add her offer to Daryl's database. They're now, if they've each got a thousand, you're now in front of a thousand other people and getting them to share their offer. But also saying to them, could you then share that offer out on social media? Please, can you tag me? Please, can you share me? So um, this works really well for um, Tara as well and anyone else who has sort of referral partnerships or collaborations. Um, then you need to monitor it. You need to be around sort of over that period, even if it's just once a day, even if it's once a day checking in for 10 to 20 minutes, just going, is that working? Is that not working? Are people messaging me? Are they emailing it? Did people actually open that? I, rem I remember one year we actually didn't turn the email on. And if I hadn't checked it that afternoon, I wouldn't have been able to send that first email because I'd forgotten to actually turn it on. So it wasn't sent that day. So um, I would have wasted out that whole opportunity if I hadn't actually gone and monitored it and picked up that, that, um, that error. And the last one, of course, is you need to then analyze it. What worked, what didn't work, uh, what can you do better next year? So you do need to allocate time for that. So I'm going to let our live audience go. And if they want to join uh, in, they can join the VIP or VIPP program and they can be part of the live audience uh, because we're now going to work on it, map it out, um, and everybody can give feedback and um, even ask questions. Thank you.